Hi, my name is Bart van Kemenade and I'm a product owner at It's Learning. In this video I want to talk to you about our new all-in-one grader. The all-in-one grader will now open from the assignment tool when you click on a student. It will open full screen so you can focus on the assessment process and there is enough space to properly read submitted texts. It is built up in three main parts. The largest part will show the answer of the student. To the right there is a panel with all the assessment options. At the top you can navigate between students or close the grader. Before I show you how it works, I first want to emphasize that the all-in-one grader can be used for more than just grading. We know that there are several views around assessment and that there are teachers that don't even give grades when they assess an assignment answer. When assessing or evaluating an answer, it is always possible to change the submission status. For example, if you want your students to resubmit. In addition, you can always provide feedback. This feedback can be written in plain text or rich text, if for example you want to add an image or a video. But you can also attach a file with your feedback or to provide additional instruction. The next two assessment options will only be available if you have set this up for the assignment. You can assess the assignment with a score or a grade, and you can even define your own assessment scales if the default options are unsuitable for you. It is also possible to assess the answer with a rubric. This can be used instead of the grade or in addition to it. Let me create an assignment with all these options so you can see how it works. I'm adding a new assignment and let's say I want my students to submit their book report here. I'll just enter a short description and you can add additional instruction or images or videos to make the assignment more engaging. On the right, all the options for the assignment are available. In this video I will focus on the options that are related to assessment. The first option I want to mention allows you to decide when the results should be available. If you leave the setting checked, the assessment of an answer will be visible to the student as soon as you save it. If you uncheck the setting, you control when the assessment should be visible. For example, when you have assessed all answers. If you want to use rubric assessment, you first need to connect the learning objective. I have created a learning objective specifically for writing book reports. If I add this learning objective, a button to manage the rubric becomes available. If I click it, you can see I have already connected criteria and achievement levels. Otherwise, I could do so now. One of the most common ways to assess is by giving a grade. There are several predefined assessment scales that can be used, but each school or even teacher can create their own if needed. Let me use SCORE for this assignment. When selecting SCORE, you are asked to fill in a maximum score. But since I'm using rubrics, the maximum score will be based on my assessment criteria. If I open my rubric again, I can now add weight to my criteria. By doing so, I can let certain criteria weigh higher than others. Let me change the weight for character description, plot and opinion. If I now close the rubric, I can see that the max score has been updated. Now there are more settings that I could enable for this assignment, but for this assignment I don't want to do that. Let me just create it. Now my students can start answering. I will fast forward in time so I can start assessing some answers. When there are submitted and unassessed assignment answers, the assignment is listed in my follow-up task list. In this case I can see I need to assess six answers. Clicking on the assignment name will take me to it. If I now click on an answer, the all-in-one grader is opened. It allows me to read or view the answer on the left while being able to assess it on the right. When a student submits a PDF file, it can be viewed directly in our document viewer. This document viewer will also show submitted Office documents, such as Microsoft Word, as PDF if Office Online is disabled for your site. With this document viewer, it is possible to add comments to specific parts of the text. These comments can be read by the student when they view their assessment. 
On the right, I can easily ask the student to resubmit by marking the assignment as incomplete. This will allow them to edit their answer and submit again. Next, I can enter a score. If I would have selected another assessment scale, for example grades A to F, I could select these here. I can enter the score directly, but I can also have it calculated automatically based on my rubric assessment. Let me open the rubric and start assessing. In this answer, the author was missing in the book report, so let me select the matching descriptor. And in the same way, I can select an achievement level for the other criteria in my rubric. With this, you can quickly give default feedback on different aspects of this assignment. When I'm done, I can simply close the window. The score now has been filled in based on my rubric assessment, but I could change it if I want. The score and rubric options will only be visible if you have selected these for the assignment. The feedback field will always be visible, but you can save the assessment without giving any feedback. You can quickly write plain text feedback. Let me tell this student he did great. I can also add a file to the feedback. For example, if I want to give the student additional instructions or guidance. If I want to add markup to my feedback, I can open the rich text editor. You can, for example, use the editor to record audio and video feedback, but in this case, I'm only adding a smiley. Now I need to save my assessment, but if I forget to do so, I will be reminded when I close the all in one grader or navigate to the next student. I choose to save my assessment. This next student has submitted a Word document and Office Online is enabled on my It's Learning site. If Office Online was not enabled, this answer would be shown as a PDF in our document viewer. With Office Online, I can make corrections in the document directly or by using the review function, add comments to it. Because the teacher can edit the document and might accidentally delete part of the student's answer, it is possible to check the contents of the document when it was submitted. Now you might have noticed it's also possible to start a discussion with the student. I'll talk more about that in a bit. One of our other new features allows schools and districts to connect their G Suite domain to its learning. If this is done, you can also view documents that are still on Google Drive in the All-in-One grader. You can open the document in a new tab to edit or comment on it. There's a separate video about this functionality. Moving on to the next student, who has written his answer using the rich text editor of its learning. Also in this case, you can view the answer while assessing it. If the student has submitted multiple files, or has written something in the rich text editor and attached the file, you first need to click on the file before you can see its contents. After it is opened, you can go back if there are other files you want to review. The all-in-one grader can also play multimedia. So if a student has uploaded a video or audio file, recorded themselves with our built-in recorder, or has embedded a video from, for example, YouTube, you can play the file directly and assess it on the fly. If a student has saved an answer as a draft, you can also see it in the all-in-one grader, but you will be warned that you are looking at a draft. You can assess the answer if desired, for example, if the deadline has passed. For draft answers, the discussion feature can be very powerful. It allows you to provide in-progress feedback to help students with their answer. In this video, let me just write some positive words to motivate the student. The last student in this course hasn't submitted his answer yet. It is possible to submit on behalf of the student, for example if you have received the file via another way. It is also possible to open the person profile for a student by simply clicking on his name. In this video I will message the student that he shouldn't forget to submit his answer. If I close the all-in-one grader, I'm taken back to the overview of students. In the remainder of this video, I briefly want to talk about the plagiarism report and about group assignments. Both can be enabled when the assignment is created. For another assignment, I have enabled plagiarism control, but I have not selected an assessment scale or added a rubric. So these are not shown on the right side of the all-in-one grader. Now let's talk about plagiarism detection, which is available as an additional module to its learning. 
If it is enabled, submitted documents are sent to an external plagiarism service. After some time, you can see the results of the plagiarism check. To open the plagiarism report, you can simply click on the plagiarism result. But it's also possible to open the report via the three dot button. In this case, it opens the report from Urkund and I can see where the text of my student has been found. The last thing I want to talk about is group assignments. When students have collaborated on an answer, all group members are shown at the top of the all-in-one grader. You can open the person profile for each individual student if you want. Any feedback or assessment will apply to all students in the group. That's all for this video. I hope you like our new all-in-one grader. Thank you for your attention.